And good morning, everybody. So I've got a topic for today. And uh, for all of you that have a non-flex radio amplifier, it's it's how to get it up and running with your flex radio and uh, smart SDR. And uh, what little knobs you have to turn and, uh, and a few questions. So this so this will apply for most amplifiers. Um, the, the first question I get a lot is, do I need a relay interface like the one MFJ makes? I think it's called the, is it the ARB704? I didn't look at it, but um, um, I didn't have it handy to look at. The question is probably, the answer rather is probably not. Um, if you have an amplifier like a TL922, any Heathkit amplifier, um, or older that uh, has um, a keying line, it's called the push to talk line, and it's greater than say 12 volts, then yes, you probably need that relay interface. And how do you tell? We well, grab the manual uh, for the amplifier and uh, have a look at it. And it will tell you in the specifications what the amp keying voltage is. Most amplifiers today, are built in the last 20 years, have uh, the keying line is 12 volts at maybe up to 100 milliamps. That's how much current it's going to draw. Some are 5 volts at 5 milliamps, not very much. And any flex radio, in fact, any radio today can handle those voltages very easily. Uh, but if you're on an amplifier where the keying is a, starts with 110 volts, then yes, you need a relay um, interface board. Now, I've, I've heard all the arguments, and that's fine. And if you really want one for that extra buffer because you are a, um, a belt and a suspenders guy, then, yep, no problem. You can add one as well. For me, it's just something else that goes wrong, something else I have to set up, or something else that makes more noise because you'll hear that relay click. But it's not wrong. Uh, it, will, um, it will impact your amp going live time because there's a couple of... 20, 30 millisecond delay in that from the time you hit the push to talk switch to the time that the external relay like the 704 engages to the time that your amplifier powers up. And this is a non-PGXL amplifier. This is, you know, ACOM, Ameritron, um, Yesu, Kenwood amplifiers, et cetera. So that's, um, that's uh, when you want to use that. So um, first off, we actually have this documented, but in, in case you've um, missed it, uh, in our downloads area, let's see if we can share this. Um, we have uh, all these, um, you know, flexradio.com slash downloads, uh, and we have all these files. And so where do I find the Smart SDR manual that reference all, references all this? Uh, you can look under Smart SDR, in this case, version three, you click on that, you click on documentation and uh, you'll find the user guides here. If you actually want to know about the hardware connectors on the back and such, uh, you can go here, I believe, and um, let's say it's a 6400 or 6600, click here. And here's the hardware reference panel, how you install the rack mount kit, the GPS DOs, not even the product brochure, which some people like to keep. Um, and a whole bunch of other things. So that's when they're pretty easy to find is, and I hope that's helpful. So, um, let's see where we at. And, uh, so, uh, also, you know, if you happen to be using smart SDR version two or version one, uh, do look in that documentation. Uh, the section numbers change between two and three. Uh, and then if you're only running version one, the concept is the same, but we're not going to have a menu called TX band settings, which is uh, pretty handy. So um, let's look at um, a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, I have to add a different, uh, to do these one at a time. So uh, just bear with me while I add a another screen that I want, which I think is this one. And uh, we have this... Um, uh, setting called TX band settings, and this is in Smart SDR. It also exists in the Maestro or the M models, and you find it by going menu, TX band settings. And I'll show you to you in Smart SDR in a moment. But this is section 20 in the Smart SDR manual. Hey, John, good morning. Uh, thanks for uh, 
for showing up. I uh, wasn't sure if it was working because I turn off all of their streaming. So the TX band settings is something cool that no other radio does. And this allows us to set our, our things like our drive power, the push to talk relays, which are on the back of the radio. And I'm sure you've seen them. They're called TX1, TX2, and TX3. And this actually means you can control three different amplifiers. Maybe you have an amplifier that's only 80 through 10. Maybe you've got a 160 meter amplifier, or maybe you only have a six meter amplifier and you only want the relays to click when you're on six meters. So uh, that's, um, that's what this is for. Now I'll go into it in detail, but uh, check out section 20 in the Smart SDR manual. Uh, well written up there. Um, what else we got? Um, and also check out uh, section 33 on how to connect an external amplifier. And uh, hi, Alan. And uh, by the way, if uh, anybody still pl uh, if playing wants to learn about Node Red, please join us on our groups.io. And Alan has been a fiend on interfacing things to his radio, and he's got a really cool panel. But uh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind providing some pointers on that, even if you know nothing about Node Red. We're uh, there to get you going on it. It's um, I think it's pretty slick, but I digress. So. Here's how to connect an external amplifier. Section 33 of the version three manual. I think it's section 32 in the version two manual, but it, uh, you can find it in the index. Uh, so what do all these mean? So, well, let's go over to Smart SDR. Um, I have to remove that and I have to um, stop sharing my screen and then I have to share another application. So let's go into Smart SDR. So, um, here's Smart SDR. I'm just going to drag it off my presentation screen. And uh, you can see it there. Under settings, well, that's funny. It doesn't show it. Well, under settings, if you scroll down, there's a, a box that says TX band settings. Sorry about that. But uh, it doesn't show that either. So let's, uh, that's no worky. There we go. You can see TX band settings. This is new, um, I think it came out sometime in version two, but let's go through obviously uh, the bands down the left-hand side from 160 through to two meters, um, 630 even, and uh, 2200 meters. Uh, in order to just get your amplifier working and assume you have that RCA push to talk cable plugged in, you're gonna, um, you're going to, uh, hi, uh, Steve, I shouldn't read the comments because I get distracted. But anyway, you're going to take that RCA cable from the push to talk or the keying lead on your amplifier, and you're going to hook it up to TX1, or you can hook it up to TX2 or TX3. But let's say it's TX1, and say I'm only using that amplifier on uh, 80 through 10. I can go like this and click them all on like such. So there's uh, 10 meters. Maybe I don't, maybe it doesn't work on 12 and uh, 17 maybe it's um like a henry amplifier you better check that keying voltage on a henry i think it's 110 volts uh, maybe it doesn't do 30 uh, or 60 but just the classic five bands so what this means is when you put your amplifier into transmit uh, it will close the contacts on that relay in the amplifier when you put your radio into transmit the, uh, the amplifier will also go on to transmit uh, john i'll get to that that's a good question. Um, thanks for being the straight man this morning. So that's what those do. If you happen to say have a um, an active antenna that wants its preamp turned off uh, while you're in transmit, you can actually use TX2 and TX3 um, to generate a relay to turn the voltage off to the receiving antenna. I do that with my DX engineering antenna. I have a keying line that opens a relay that turns off the 12 volts, which is what the active antenna wants while I'm in transmit. So that's where all these come in. That's um, um, that's the basic part of that. Um, push to talk inhibit. Actually, I'm going to turn all these off, uh, or I can turn them all back on. Push to talk inhibit is actually to say, I don't want my radio to actually go in transmit. So maybe I don't have a 30 meter antenna. So I uh, let's just turn these all off so we're, we're not confused. Normally, you want these off, these push to talk inhibits. Um, but say I don't have a 30 meter antenna. If I go to 30 meters, I don't want the radio going to transmit. Or 
or uh, you know whatever 160 you can turn these on and this will prevent your radio from accidentally going on transmit on those bands that you may not have an antenna um so that's uh, that's pretty handy for that so that's how the tx band settings work so let's uh, go into radio settings radio setup of course uh there it is there and under the where is it that's funny i don't see it on my computer screen, so bear with me a second. Uh, this is funny. Standby. I can sort of work with it off of, um, oh, I can't even work off on that. It must be on this menu. Bear with me a second while I find it. So on my smart SDR, let me stop sharing and I'll just share my, I'll just, um, I will share my screen and that'll solve that problem. Uh, go here, share. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Chrome crashed. Actually, seemed to recover fairly well. So let's try sharing Smart SDR again. That's the first time that's ever happened. And we're going to do this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there's Smart SDR. And with some luck, I can find the window I want settings. Radio setup, perfect. And uh, thanks for your patience. So John's asking about the time constants. This is uh, really important. So these values here under radio setup transmit, and they're also on the Maestro and the M model, but you'll have to look them up. It's harder for me to broadcast those devices. Uh, I might do one later, but um, it's uh, I don't have access to the uh, emulator at the moment. So RCA TX1 and TX2, TX3 are the delays before um, we actually transmit. So on TX1, we generally want to, if we're using TX1, I generally leave this at 20 milliseconds. Uh, just 20 is fine. Or more importantly, added on to the end of that delay is this transmit delay. And you may have to, you may have to play with that and set it to something Oh, I don't try 25 milliseconds, which isn't very much. Now, I noticed when I had my ACOM amplifier, I had to have this uh, set to about 25 or 30. And uh, otherwise, I would get um, arc fault messages on it. Didn't hurt the amplifier, but it just meant that the amplifier went into transmit before the RF, um, or sorry, after the RF started getting sent out to the radio. So that's what this does. So transmit delay is a value you can put in there to um, say, don't enable the RF coming from the radio until this timer has expired. And if you really want to test that, you can make that a thousand, I think, which is one second. Hit the push to talk switch and start talking and you'll see it'll take a second before the RF actually goes out. So just to be sure, I would always have that for amplifiers keyed at about 25 to 30 milliseconds. 
some amplifiers longer, some amplifiers shorter. So, John, I hope that um, I hope that answers your question. And I don't know what uh, what got cut out. So, um, if you want, you can also uh, set your max power to um, some other value than hundred. And if we if we go back to the TX band settings. Uh, notice that this column here, I don't know if you can see the columns or my mouse, but under RF power and under tune power, you can set those RF levels to uh, something uh, unique. Um, if you're always using an amplifier, maybe you want to set it at 25. Uh, so that's uh, what you can make use of for that. So... Um, 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 I think that's it uh, this morning. Uh, that's how you want to connect an amplifier. So in summary, you want to get the RCA cable from the amplifier to the, T, let's say, TX1 on your radio. You want to open TX band settings and uh, make sure that you've got, you know, TX1 checked on the bands you want to use your radio. Uh, then you also want to go into uh, radio setup transmit and add under TX delay, I'd add 25 or 30 seconds. That just means that we want to make sure that the amplifier is in transmit mode before we send any RF power. So that's it for today. Have a great day and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the DX or whatever. I think I heard we had a solar storm coming, but I saw a bit of aurora last night. That's what I get for living in the northern latitudes. And uh, 73 all. It's Mike, VA3MW. Take care.